In 2023, on my Goodreads and my Storygraph, I picked my reading goal challenge to be 75 books. That was the same amount that I picked the previous year in 2022, and I did exceed it by quite a lot in 2022. I probably read the most that I've ever read in 2022, but I wanted to pick 75 books again this year because it felt like a good goal. I could read less than I read in 2022. I could read more than I read in 2022. I would probably reach my goal, but it wasn't super easy either. It is now June 9th and I have just finished my 74th book for the year and that was Darius the Great is Not Okay. I really enjoyed this one. So I thought it would be a fun thing to do to vlog my 75th book. The book that completes my reading challenge early. It only took me about half of the year to read 75 books. The first thing that we have to do is pick the next book that I'm going to read. I am going to read Mr. Nobody by Katherine Steadman. I found this one on audio. It is a thriller set in England. I thought it was set in Florida, but it's set in England about a man who has lost his memory and the doctor who comes to his aid. I have been wanting to read a Katherine Steadman. I have keep picking up her books and I haven't read any by her yet so I thought this would be a good one and since I found it on audio and it is read by the author I thought that would be fun. This is probably not going to be my 75th book though I mean anything could happen but even if I start reading this on audio today which I hope I will I won't finish it probably till at least next Tuesday if not later than that because I only read my audiobook if I'm driving alone not with my husband, if I'm working from home, which I do plan to do for a couple of hours today, but this audiobook is like 10 hours long, or if I'm working in my office job that I only do on Tuesdays, like I said, I probably will finish another book before then. So I have a big stack of books over here that I possibly want to read, and I thought we would just go through them. I just grabbed a bunch of books that looked good to me that I was interested in and I thought we'd just talk through them and then I might read a couple of sentences. It's not going to be like a try a chapter because I'm definitely not going to read the whole chapter but since I'm a mood reader a lot of times how I pick a book is that I grab a pile of books and I just read a couple of sentences or even just read the back or even just read about the author sometimes and that will determine if that's the book that I choose as my next book. Book. I did a whole vlog where as a mood reader I picked my next read for an entire month. I will have that link down below if you would like to check that out. Here are some of the books that I'm thinking of and why I might or might not read them. I have been wanting to read Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire in Society and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. This is a nonfiction about asexuality, kind of defining asexuality and talking about it. And I have been wanting to read a nonfiction. I've been craving nonfiction. It's Pride Month. It would be a good month to read it. I don't know. It could be an interesting one to vlog or it could be a boring one to vlog. I don't know. Another book that was on my summer TBR that I thought about was Dinosaur by Lind Lydia Millet. I have no idea what this is about at all. Oh, Dinosaurs. I read a children's Bible and I really loved it and this is her latest release. It's very summery cover to me. I really like it, but I literally have no idea what it's about. I also pulled out This is How You Lose the Time War. This is another queer book that could be good for June and I've heard only good things about this. This is written by Amal El Matar and Max Gladstone and I know that this is somewhat of an epistolary novel, which I love. Then I thought about Swimming Lessons. This is a little bit of a bigger book. This is by Claire Fuller and it's about a mother who leaves her family and then leaves them notes after she's gone and how the family copes with that. That's definitely like a heavier read. I have been wanting to read it for many years and I think this could be an interesting one. Queer graphic novel that I picked up a few days ago, maybe a week ago. The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. This is, like I said, just a graphic novel. So I just have to see if I'm in the mood for a graphic novel. I'm not like super enamored of the art, but this would be a really fast read that I could read all in one day. And I'm not leading to it. It also smells. Do you know when you get 
used books like someone read it while they were wearing like a lot of perfume or they had like a very perfumey house sometimes those books really turn me off and I need to wait until they stop smelling. I mean, my house probably doesn't smell any better because it smells like cats, but. And then I was thinking about Malibu Rising, which has been on like every summer TBR, except my latest one. This is by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it's in the Taylor Jenkins Reid like universe, the same universe that The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six and Carrie Soto is back is in. I'm not super interested in a lot of those. I've had the opportunity several times to read Jay-Z Jones and the Six and I really am not interested in it. Same with Carrie Soto is Back. I just don't think that's an interesting one. But I originally didn't want to read Evelyn Hugo either and then I really loved it and it was a great summer read. So should we read Malibu Rising for summer and for my 75th book? And then the last book that I picked up is another queer book. It's Baby Cakes by Amistad Maupin. This is the fourth in the Tales of the City books. I've already read the first three books in the series previously and I reread them between 2021 and 2022. The last book I read was in June 2022. So this is the fourth in the series. I don't think I've ever read this before, so this would not be a reread for me. And it follows all your favorite characters, Miss Madrigal, Michael Mouse, and Mona, and all the people from the quirky found family that lives in a cute little apartment building in San Francisco. These are just such fun summer reads and queer and just wonderful. Super short chapters. They're only usually like two to five pages long. Super easy to get through. They were originally serialized so they do kind of read like that and I think that makes them go even faster. This would be a sequel. I don't know how that would make for like vlogging it because I don't know if you would want to give away everything that happened in the previous three books but they're so soapy and like so campy and so fun that maybe it doesn't matter if you give some of those things away. So I'm not even sure how I'm gonna go about this. A lot of times what I'll do, like I said, is just read a couple of sentences, see what's grabbing me, and then come back to you when I've picked one of these books or if maybe another book sparks my interest. days since I saw you and I have been reading Malibu Rising. I have not been reading as much as I thought I would. I am only about at page 74 and I do like it so far. It's definitely not grabbing my interest as much as Evelyn Hugo did and I think one of the problems that I'm having I am creating for myself which is I'm anticipating or wanting to see the connections between Evelyn Hugo and Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books that are contained in Malibu Rising, like more than I was just reading the actual story. So for about the first like 45 pages, I was like, who's this person? Who's this person? Do they fit into these other books? Oh, there's a mention of someone that fits into another book. That's exciting. Oh, I can't remember who this person was in Evelyn Hugo. I have to go look. After about the 45 page mark, I stopped doing that and I kind of realigned my thinking to more just pay attention to this book as it was and not think about her other books while I'm reading this one. And that made me get into it more and be able to be more immersed in the story. So far, 
far, the story is very simple. We're following Nina Riva for the most part, who is the eldest of the Riva family. She is 25. She is a model, and she has recently been dumped by her husband for another woman. It was very public, and since she and her husband are both celebrities, it's a very public affair. So she wakes up in the morning that the book starts. This book takes place all over one day. She's thinking about that, and she's also thinking about how every year on this day she and her siblings have a huge party and how this party is significant in her siblings and her life and how she has to go on with it even though she really doesn't feel like doing anything after her husband's left her. We also meet her siblings Jay and Kit. They are a little bit like worried about her and the events that have happened but they're excited for the party and then we meet their half-sibling who I can't remember his name right now and he has his own problems. So we're meeting Meeting each character, we're learning about them and their connection and their relationship to each other. And at the same time, we're flashing back to the 1950s when their father, Mick Riva, met and married their mother, how that relationship started and how that relationship is going. So, so far, I'm enjoying it, but I'm not like super crazy immersed. I think the incredibly like casual, realistic writing style that I really like in Evelyn Hugo isn't quite as prominent in this one. It does have a lot to do with surfing because all the Rivas really love to surf, so I do like that aspect and it's interesting to read about. I would be interested to know if Taylor Jenkins read surfs though because although she knows the terminology and although she talks about things that surfers might talk about, it doesn't feel like genuine the way that Evelyn Hugo felt genuine in just about everything that was talked about. I think it's interesting that she, in this one she's writing about a pro surfer and she's writing about people who love to surf and the art of surfing and the sport of surfing. And then one of her next books is all about tennis. So I wonder if she's kind of a sporty gal. So that's where I am. I'm only about 75 pages in, but when I read some more I will let you know. much, much later, over a month since I have finished Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I never finished updating this vlog. I'm not sure why. Partly there were other videos to do, partly there was other things to read, partly, although I'm happy that I read Malibu Rising as my 75th book of the year, the book that reaches my Goodreads goal, it didn't blow me away. I loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much and that was such a surprise for me that maybe I built Malibu Rising up a little too high in my mind because I had very low expectations for Evelyn Hugo and then really Really liked it. I think I went into Malibu Rising thinking I would really like it. And don't get me wrong, I did really like it, but it didn't give me that awesome book feeling that I got from Evelyn Hugo. I think that Taylor Jenkins Reid is really good at creating an environment where the reader can live in, that the reader can feel comfortable in, that the reader can explore, and I think she does that super well in this book. I think she always writes a little bit of a love story and a little bit of a tragic love story from what I can tell, which I also really liked. I really enjoyed the surfing aspects and the sport aspects of this book, which I think is such an interesting aspect of her writing 
that we're seeing more of, like with Carrie Soto is back. Even though I haven't read that one, I know that it's all about a tennis star who happens to be also in Malibu Rising. But now, more than a month later, I don't remember a ton of this book. I don't feel a huge impact from it. And some of the things that I do remember were the things that I kind of didn't like. So there was an aspect to this book of people's reactions that I thought were just not realistic. The way that the Riva kids dealt with their feelings about their absent father to me was not super realistic. Obviously that in real life is a huge, intricate, emotional topic that everyone is going to deal with differently, but I felt in this book the reactions just didn't feel all that true to the characters. There wasn't enough emotion behind it for the way they reacted. The reactions could have gone vastly oscillated between like detached and clinical about it, or like super emotional like distraught about it, and it just didn't feel fleshed out enough, I guess is what I want to say. Like, I don't want to give any spoilers and I don't want to skew your reading experience. If you are going to read this, I think you should. If you are interested in it at all, if you're interested in sibling relationships, I think this is a great one. If you're interested in summer books, if you're interested in the beach, if you're interested in surfing, like all those things would make this a great read for many people. I felt that those relationships like really kind of dragged it down for me in a lot of ways and didn't make sense like you were almost like mad at the characters like why are you doing that you know which is not the way I want to feel like if you're invested in a character and you feel that way maybe or if it's like a horror or something you're like don't go in that room but if you're not as invested in their emotional response this just didn't feel genuine to me and the thing about Evelyn Hugo was it felt so genuine while I was reading it. Most of Malibu Rising felt genuine as well. It was just that one part that kind of like skewed my whole experience of the book. That being said, I really did enjoy it. I definitely plan to read more Taylor Jenkins read books. I do want to read Carrie Soto because she was an interesting character in this and had a lot of nuance for being on the page very little. But I don't want to read Daisy Jones and the Six. I just don't want to read it. I just don't care. I watched the first episode of the show. I had the physical book for a hot minute. I know how to find the audiobook and I'm just... I'm not interested. As far as Malibu Rising being my 75th book of the year, I feel good that this was the book I chose. I'm happy to have crossed something off one of my summer TBRs. I'm happy to have read my second Taylor Jenkins read. I'm happy to have gotten my 75th book of the year. I do think that completing my Goodreads goal, my story graph goal, my reading challenge in June is probably a little too early. I know that one of my goals for 2023 was to read a little bit slower and I have not been doing that. In May I read 22 books and that was too many and in June I read 13 books and that was probably too many too. Like I think that the faster that I read the less I love the books that I'm reading and the less that I'm invested in the books that I'm reading and the less that they are impacting me or I am remembering them. Over the last six months I don't feel like I've read my favorite book of the year. Like I don't feel like I've read a lot of amazing books that have really impacted me or that will stick with me for a long time after I've read them. Whereas I think previous years on booktube I've always had a book like that where I was so excited that I thought of it all year long, that it was 100% going to be on my favorites list. It came back to me at random times, and I just don't know if I've had that in 2023. I mean, it's a nice feeling to finish a goal early, especially six months early, but I think that overall it's not been the best reading year for me, or the best practice for me to be reading so fast. But how do you balance that, right? Like, because I love to read, I want to read, I don't read 10 hours every day. I only read, you know, a couple of hours every day at most, sometimes a little bit more depending on what's going on. How do I create a more meaningful and lasting impression of the books that I'm reading? How do I read all the books that I want to read? Because there are many and still find books that I really love the reading experience as well as the book. It's an interesting question. Let me know what your Goodread goal was or is for 2023. Let me know how close or far you are. Let me know how your reading year is going so far. I would love to know. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!